Hey guys, and welcome to the first video of a series of guides on how to set up your IRL budget streaming backpack. Now, if you haven't checked out this video, please check it out. It's the intro to this one. So you know what we're talking about. We've made a nice solution that costs roughly about seven to $800 that can match or even beat the quality of those IRL backpacks that you know that are two, three thousand dollars plus. I'll be guiding you step by step on how to enable SRT between your phone or your mobile encoder and your stream PC. And by the end of the video, you'll find out first how easy it is. And second, I'll be sharing my preferred settings that work much better than the default ones. So let's jump right in. So to get started to do the most basic setup, you just need your phone and the PC you want to stream to. All right, so on your phone, you want to download Lyrix Screencaster. It's the best streaming app available both on iOS and Android, and we'll be using it to test our sender side for SRT. We'll first set up a local network example. So connect your phone to your Wi-Fi that is on the same network as your PC. Uh, and later on, we'll do the same thing, but through 4G. Remember, this is just a test with the phone. You can do this on any device that supports SRT, as you'll see. So now you want to get the local address of your stream PC in your network. Open up a command window, IP config, and you see it as the IPv4 address. All right, so this is the critical part of the initial setup. We take the address, go into Lyrix, tap settings, connections, new connection, and uh, insert a name, whatever, doesn't matter. And now you type in SRT and then your local address, which is almost always 192.168, blah, blah. And then you add a four or five digit port to make sure that you're not using a port that is already being used on your PC. So in this case, we'll use 22222. And at the end, you wanna append mode equals caller. Now, why is this important? We want SRT to work as best as possible and it works best if you have a device that is sending in caller mode and a device that is receiving in listener mode. If we go back into settings, we can also set up uh, more video and audio options, but let's say we use HEVC and 1080p at 2000 kilobits per second. Yes, we can decode HEVC over SRT in OBS. That's the main reason why I'm making this video. This is big. That we can use a much better protocol and encoder, which if you watched the previous video, you would know that it can save you so much bandwidth up to 30 to even 50% in certain cases. Now you can go back and just start it. Now Lyrix is capturing your mobile screen and sending it somewhere. Well, really nowhere yet because we need a proper way to receive and decode the stream on our stream PC. So we're in OBS and we need to make a media source that is going to take the SRT Hefk stream, display it in OBS, and then we can stream it in a normal way to Twitch or to YouTube. So let's add a media source, turn all the checkboxes off, every single one, and then we're gonna lower this reconnect delay. I'll show you why later. Input, SRT, same address as on the phone, and same port as on the phone, because here we're accepting that. And then we just use a different mode. Instead of caller, we're gonna use listener. Here we go. The stream is right there. It took three seconds for it to automatically connect because it was streaming all the time. It was just no receiver available. As you can see, Lyrics is uh, streaming with, uh, well, variable bitrate, but it's definitely streaming. Now, what's great about this is that it also automatically reconnects in case you stop streaming or the connection drops and then you restart again. But be careful, in OBS, 
while you're recording, it does not allow you to reconnect for some reason in the media source. So it's a bug, we've reported it. There we go, we got it to work on the local network. Now let's make it work on 4G. All you really have to do is replace the IP that you input on your phone with your PC's external IP. That's it. The setup on your PC remains exactly the same. It doesn't matter if the connection is coming from the local network or the internet. One big concern when streaming with an IP address like this is that it might change. Most routers at home change your IP address almost every day, so it could change it even during a stream. <laughs> How would that end up? So what you have to do is get a static IP address and you should definitely use no IP. The link's up here. I'm not even affiliated with them. I'm just so impressed by what they offer and how well it works. It's going to add maybe like a second of delay, if even that much. And uh, it's gonna rid you of all issues and troubles and worries about uh, dynamic IP addresses from now on. So after you install it, just replace whatever address you had now and uh, put your custom URL in, which would be, I don't know, streampc.hot2.org, and that's it. Okay, since you made it this far, I'm going to give you my exact SRT settings on the TBS encoder that I've showcased in the latest video, as well as OBS on the receiving side. In one of the next videos, I'll go into why I chose their numbers, but for now, you can just use these settings as they are. Okay, we're now inside TBS, stream settings and we're looking at the srt line it has two parameters mode caller we already know and then the next one is max bandwidth it's set to 12 megabits and the stream itself is set to 6 megabits so it's double keep in mind that this number is in bytes per second that's it for this side now we're going to the obs side as you can see in obs there's a lot more parameters the general idea is to increase the latency by a little bit to get better stability because we're using only a single 4G connection. Feel free to use these settings as you see them here. It should work just fine and the latency is still very, very low, guys. We're talking a few seconds maximum. You can find the full commands in the description. You can just copy and paste them and then insert your addresses. And that's your first SRT streaming setup. Hopefully you're as surprised by how easy this is as I was when I saw it and that this guide has actually helped you please let me know in the comments if this worked for you at all if you need any help setting this up either come by my stream or even better join our discord the links up here and we'll definitely help you there's a dedicated channel just for this hashtag IRL streaming we have a great community there and a lot of people came in from the last video just inquiring and trying stuff out and even uh, showing their DIY solutions. I'll do a lot more videos on this topic. We'll cover the cameras, we'll cover the encoder in depth, how to properly set it up. It's a little bit hard. And all the overlays and the disconnect protection. There's a lot to cover. So uh, see you in the next one.